Hey guys, welcome to another episode on TFB TV. Today, we did a bunch of cool stuff with some German small arms, practically everything the German army actually had in the Second World War. Um, we're gonna kick things off here and you're gonna meet these awesome dudes that I have to my left. Um, before that, I'd really like to thank Ventura Munitions for helping to sponsor this episode and wearing one of their shirts here. Thank you very much, appreciate it. And check out our Patreon while we're at it. So today, what we did is we took a number of these. We took these machine guns here, the 42, we took the SCG 44, the MP40, and the Mausers and a Guerrero 43 earlier, but that broke, unfortunately. It blew up. It blew up, yeah, that kind of sucked. Okay. Um, but what we did is we, similar to our live fire before, we wanted to see how these weapons were being used, you know, in an actual sort of combat setting, you know, in a team trying to accomplish a certain objective, working with a base of fire and working off of bounding. Nothing as complex as we did previously in our previous live fire video, but it would be just really cool to try and kind of get a couple guys together and just run through this stuff here. So let's start from big to small, right? Um, Jesse, tell me about the MG42 and what were your impressions of it, especially comparing to, you know, you're, you were actually a machine gunner in the Army. Um, how does working an MG42 compare to running a 240? Well, I was actually surprised about how the feed and everything like that is. It actually looks very uh, familiar, uh, familiar to me and everything like that, but way, way heavier and it kicks a lot more. You got a lot more kick to it and that's a, yeah, I would. You'd have had to been a man to shoulder fire that back in the day. Yeah, what did you think about uh, the bipod mount as it was on the ground compared to a 240 mount? Uh, I like 240 mount. I was. Uh, I like that a lot because it's stiffer. I don't like how that could adjust. You know what I mean? You know, and you, you fall forward or something like that before you know you're shooting in the dirt. You know, something like that. And so. you had some issues with that with the 42 today, right? Yeah. Yeah, and this is you know this is your first day ever ever handling a 42, and I think gradually as you moved on with it, you actually got better every time you went on there. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like riding a bike. Yeah, Jesse on the MG42, he learned that you know, yeah, it it was shitty ammo, and in, in this case, I think maybe the extractor's going. Um, there's it can fail. It fires so fast, it it fails differently. Um, it mechanically fails differently. The, the, the fault drill, the no-fault drills he knew from the previous machine gun didn't work on this gun. I had to teach him a different no uh, clearing mechanism. Definitely shot better with the 240 Bravo, but as you can see, like, I still, I, I wasn't that bad with that today, but I was off, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it, it kicks a lot harder and everything like that. It's, it's a lot manlier of a gun, you know I, what I mean? I That's think a, his problem was he didn't really understand the well, how I don't know, flimsy the bipod is compared to what he's used to on the Exactly. And once he realized that he was allowing the gun to, to move back and the bipod would move, he, when he actually leaned into the bipod, mm -hmm. his percentage of hits went up dramatically on steel mm -hmm. from like one out of a burst to say three out of a burst. Mm -hmm. And then, like he said, the gun is fired so fast and the recoil is so heavy that you're even on a two-foot plate at 100 meters, you're not going to put them all on. Uh, even even trying to just get off a three-round burst or a five-round burst a couple times, and that's a you know what I mean. You're sending seven, ten rounds down range, and you don't you know what I mean before you know it. When he was shooting this gun, he was doing I don't I call it the the monkey grip, but you guys all have, but a lot of guys put their their grip up here. Yeah. All the gas ports are here. The gas excess uh, blow-off holes. Yeah. And he could easily, from shooting an M16 and not being familiar with an STG, burn your hand. Yeah. It would be very easy to burn your hand. It's, it's impressive. It's just more getting used to any weapon systems than what you're prepared to use or used to using all the time. Uh, I, I wouldn't be afraid to go to war with that one. Obviously, okay. I'm more trained on other things, but it wouldn't bother me at all to do so. Yeah, if we had a modern day one made today, sort of thing. Well, actually, I think you, the, the ones they made, this one would be fine if they had modern ammo. I mean, we were shooting Kurtz ammo that was East German. Mm -hmm. what was it dated 54, 55, something like that? I'm not sure. I mean, the bullets were discolored, and yet they worked way better than the 8mm. They literally, almost every one of them cycled the gun. I think maybe we had four or five short, short strokes. Mm -hmm. So, um... What were your impressions with shooting it and actually running and moving with the things? They worked a lot better than I thought they were going to. Okay. They're extremely impressive. What did you expect before and what did you this, actually this find guy, out? No, no recoil at all. No recoil at all with MP4? Almost none. None. Yeah. And what okay. about the CG44? Still impressive. Not very much either. Yeah. I noticed at the end you were actually able to get single shots off with the MP40. Um, going, you transitioned from bursts in the beginning to single shots at the end as you started conserving more in ammunition. 
Am I correct with that? Correct. Dave, you were sh- you were making hits, I think, out to 100. We're at 100 right now. You, yeah. You were making hits on the steel with the MP40. And that's, you know, it's a little bit beyond subgun range at that point. Can you tell us a little bit about that? How easy was it to you make those hits while Extremely running? Extremely easy. It surprised me to be able to do so. Yeah. It was very surprising. Most of the guys today, obviously, we serve the M16 close bolt gun. And the only real open bolts anymore are the 240 and the 249. Even the 50s a closed bolt gun. Mm-hmm. So they don't, they're not used to the you know, World War II infantry mentality of the open bolt submachine gun. And uh, I was telling them, and, and, and as I said, it was really nice to have people listen, which is a shock for me because that doesn't happen very often. Um, lock, look, and load on an, on an open bolt. And we can't do it on this one because it broke too. But um, you lock the bolt back. You look in the chamber to make sure it's clear, and the magazine will insert readily. You don't have to smack it or anything. It'll just go up and then click, and I think he saw that. A little bit left. You could, oh, and, smooth, yeah. and then when it when it runs empty, you lock, you look to make sure it actually is empty and it's not a stuck round or anything, because obviously when you let the bolt go forward, it's going to fire. You pull the empty magazine out, reinsert, and you keep running. And it, 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 Were they lying about the recoil? If you take somebody who hasn't shot a, an open bolt machine gun, and they're used to an M16, they'll, they'll fumble. But if they just remember lock, look, run, lock, look, load, or lock, look, unload, mm-hmm. if you're making the gun safe, they'll, they'll be able to shoot those guns all day long. The Mausers got real hot. Yeah. And, this, and it's not even that hot today, but they got smoking hot after 45, 50 rounds. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think, think I think that really, that, I mean, I'm sure I could say I can't be too surprised, but I am sort of surprised in that we shot like 45, 50 rounds on one run, and that's what a German soldier in the Second World War carried, what, 60 rounds, say 90 rounds or so? Uh, on uh, 90. 90 Three rounds. Three pouches of 15 on each side. Yeah, and that, so that would be 6 times 15, 90. So I only shot, you know, half of what a combat load was, and that rifle was already too hot to touch in certain places. Not every place, but it was too hot to touch. And that's something that is kind of interesting to me because I would have figured the heating would have taken more rounds at that. But that's something German soldiers would have had to deal with all the time. Um, Tim, I have a question for you. You had some confusion with the rear sight on the Mauser. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I'm not, I don't wanna, I'm not trying to make fun of you or poke fun at you because I found that was an interesting learning experience um, coming from an inexperienced shooter who's never shot a Mauser before. And this is something that it was probably a case, you know, for inexperienced shooters all over the world picking up a Mauser and using it. Tell us what happened with your Mauser. Oh, well, this is uh, kind of think an Enfield yeah. gun, and I, I thought the space was a little bit wider than it should be back here, but I never even thought to look any further and catch that little groove. Yeah, so, you know, dumbass award. You were <laughs> ac- you actually confused the elevation adjustment for the actual rear sight, and you were missing a, lum- a number of times. Not because of your bad shot, but because you didn't realize that's how that firearm was different than something else. I enjoyed watching these guys shoot these guns because they had they were willing to put the effort into to like listen and learn, which not everybody does. A lot of times you'll see those people. Well, hey, I played Call of Duty. I know I'm not shooting an STG 44. That's not true. Yeah, with the C clamp. And uh, <laughs> and you know, like I showed them how to full auto lean and stuff. Now, granted, these guns don't have any recoil, but you know. It was a it was a good all around learning time. Yeah, I I would like to see. This is just me, and, and I understand if you're into NFA, not you can't go to your local gun range and shoot an MG42 or shoot an MG34, and certainly not a Sturm Gewehr because they're so expensive. But if you're into this stuff, there are places all around the country, uh, and I'm not putting the plug in them, but, but stuff in my mind, I think it's, there's drive tanks in Florida, there's Battlefield Las Vegas, uh, Bob Creek Range, there, there are places that you really should go out and get some trigger time on these old guns. But I would really like to see your, your viewers, and since you do a lot of historic stuff, go out and, and try these guns, because they're, they're, they're such a joy to see them work and see them shoot. And they, they, don't get me wrong, I was extremely frustrated when stuff blew up today, but jam, it's jam. like, it's history. It's living history. We yeah, got to do shoot. stuff that they did in from 1942 to 1945. Mm-hmm. If you can please check out Scott's channel, Machine Gun Dad, he could really use uh, a good subscriber count. He's got some really cool stuff there, and we're working with him to try to 
uh, get some more quality content out there, especially with formatting it better for how YouTube's algorithms now work these days. Um, thank you very much, and we hope to see you next time.